Hey guys, welcome back to another video on this channel. Today I'm going to show you Ad Astra for Forge and Fabric. This is a mod that introduces space exploration to Minecraft. You can build your own rockets, spacesuits, space stations and machines. Venture out to dangerous planets and build your own space civilization. You want to know how this mod works? Then let's get started. Firstly, you need a rocket of course. To craft one, you'll need multiple machines that serve the building components, provide energy and construct the rocket. The first machine you'll want to make is the coal generator. This machine takes in burnable materials such as wood and coal and converts them into energy, which is essential to power every machine in this mod. For a coal generator, you'll need to hammer iron ingots in a crafting grid to obtain iron plates, a material used to craft many important parts, including the next machine. Furthermore, you will need to obtain the main component of the rocket, steel, by smelting iron ingots in a blast furnace. Make lots of it, as you will need it throughout your space journey. The next machine, the compressor, is essential to form those steel ingots into steel plates, which are the main component of the tier 1 rocket. To power multiple machines without placing them next to the coal generator, you can craft steel cables, allowing you to transfer energy from a distance. For the rocket construction itself, you need to craft a NASA workbench. For this workbench, we need steel. Once it is crafted, you can start the construction of your very first rocket. There are four different tiers of rockets. We will start with tier 1. For the top, we need a nose cone. Then six steel blocks, four rocket fins, two steel tanks, and finally, you need the engine, which is crafted using steel plates, a steel frame, and a steel fan. And that's it! You've got your first rocket. For our rocket to launch, we need a launch pad. Place the launch pad on the ground and then place the rocket in the center. Furthermore, we need to fill our rocket with fuel. While traveling through oceans, you might encounter oil. You need this resource in order to create fuel. After collecting the oil, you need a fuel refinery. Power the refinery and put the oil in the left slot. Next, collect the fuel and then shift right click the rocket in order to open its menu. Place 3 buckets of fuel into the rocket. Don't forget to place 3 additional buckets in the rocket's storage space for your trip back to Earth. Now we could theoretically already launch, however, we would die very fast as there is no oxygen on our first destination, the moon. Therefore we need a spacesuit and an oxygen supply. So we craft a space helmet, space pants, space boots and a chest plate, which is a little bit more difficult to craft. For this item we need two oxygen tanks and oxygen gear. Now we need oxygen, which has to be extracted from water. For this process we need an oxygen loader. Connect this block to a power source and then access it. Place water in the left tank and wait until it is converted into oxygen. This process has to be repeated until you have enough oxygen for your journey. You can extract the oxygen using a bucket, spacesuit or an oxygen tank. Now we are almost ready, but before we actually start, you need to follow these steps very carefully or you might end up stranded on the moon or worse. In order to return to Earth from the moon, you need a launch pad and three buckets of fuel. Just place these items in the rocket's inventory and make sure you have them with you before launching. Moreover, you should take multiple full oxygen tanks with you as well as food, weapons, tools and soul torches or glowstone as normal torches will burn out without oxygen. If you completed the checklist, enter the rocket, press the space key and lift off. You will enter a menu where you can choose your destination. For tier 1 you can only pick the earth or moon, afterwards you will descend in a lander. Be sure to press space to soften the fall of your lander or else it will crash into the moon and explode with you and your rocket inside. If you want to return home, shift right click your lander and collect the rocket, fuel and launch pad and prepare your launch as you did before. To remove the lander, punch it. Congratulations! You just reached the moon and can show everybody by placing a customized flag which can display any MGU image URL. The moon is a dead and grey wasteland. If you place normal torches or lanterns up here, they will get extinguished. That's why soul torches or glowstone are pretty useful. You can find an important resource called Dash. You need Dash in order to advance in this mod, 
and build a tier 2 rocket, space station and more advanced machinery. You can also use dash plates to craft cables with a higher transfer rate. And the wrench. The wrench can be used to extend cables in certain directions or disconnect them from other cables. Furthermore, you are now able to build solar panels, which can produce more energy while being self-reliant. Their power generation depends on the planet's distance from the Sun, meaning that the closest planets like Mercury generate the most solar energy, while distant or foggy planets generate less. You can also find moon cheese, a common ore that is not only delicious, but it will also keep you fat on the moon. There is also a new mob called Star Crawler, which is a hostile moon animal that drops cheese upon dying. There's a new vehicle called the Rover, which is a land vehicle capable of driving on rough terrains. For that you need dash blocks, a dash engine and wheels. The vehicle is pretty fast and has an inventory to store items. Two people can drive on it at once. For the Rover to work you need to fill it with fuel by shift right clicking it and then placing fuel in the left slot. Now you will surely want to build your lunar base. For that, we need a few new blocks to create an atmosphere in which we can survive without our spacesuit. First, you need an oxygen distributor, which allows you to distribute oxygen in a sealed room. It works exactly as the oxygen loader, but distributes the oxygen directly into the air. To supply the distributor with water indefinitely, you need a water pump. First, make sure the room is completely sealed so that no oxygen can escape. Then place water or oxygen in the oxygen distributor to make the environment safe, allowing you to place water without it freezing. Then form an infinite water source on the ground and put the pump above it, with the exit valve facing the distributor. Now power both machines and open the distributor GUI to confirm that water is going into it. You can also connect the fluid supply using fluid pipes, which work similar to cables. Craft a few pipes, connect both machines and then use a wrench to configure the pipes modes to extract for the extraction of the fluid out of the water pump and insert for the receiving block the oxygen distributor. Once you have supplied the oxygen distributor with an infinite water source and sufficient energy in a completely sealed room, it will distribute the oxygen in that room. You can check if the process is successful by entering the blocks menu and clicking the show button. If there are bubbles floating around, the room is supplied with oxygen. Feel free to take off your helmet. If there is some hole in your structure causing the oxygen to escape, the menu will give you a warning. Simply patch the hole and after that you should be able to take off your spacesuit without dying. A single oxygen distributor can support up to 2000 blocks, allowing you to build a pretty big space station. If you need more oxygen, simply build more oxygen distributors. Inside your structure, you should also provide proper ventilation to ensure that oxygen does not get blocked when the door is closed. To do this, create a one block gap in between walls or create a space that leads to a distributor. On the moon, you might find large underground villages inhabited by the Narians. These aliens don't need oxygen and can survive on the moon. You can trade with them, similar to villagers. They have unique and valuable traits such as space armor and oxygen. There are also Lunarian Wandering Traders who appear on every moon and planet. They have many rocket-related traits that may save your life, like launch pads, oxygen, fuel, water and so on. They will only accept emeralds, which you can find regularly in the various structures on the moon and planets. There is also a dungeon on the moon. It's filled with a ton of loot, including dash, emeralds and gear. There are also many corrupted Lunarians, which are moon zombies that spit projectiles at you and drop ice shards. In addition, each dungeon has a chance to contain a large room with multiple dash blocks and a cool trophy, the moon globe. It's a nice decoration that spins and you can even make it spin forever by powering it with redstone. You can also find space paintings in dungeons, which all have cool space illustrations. As you saw before, you can also enter a space station instead of landing on the planet or the moon itself. This structure is pre-built and created in the selection screen, provided you have the necessary materials. You can expand your space station if you want to, in order to build your dream base above a moon or planet. They will always spawn in whatever position you launched your rocket at. So don't forget to remember the coordinates to avoid losing the structure. Once the space station has been created, you can return to it by clicking the orbit button on the planet screen. Next, we want to go to Mars. For that, we need a tier 2 rocket, which is built similarly to a tier 1 rocket. 
In general, I definitely recommend using just enough items so you always have the recipes at your disposal. Link is in the description. So to go to Mars, build a tier 2 rocket, which is the same process as before, but with dash instead of steel. And whoosh, we have landed on Mars. Here we can find a new material called Ostrum, which is used to craft more powerful space armor and exceptional machines, as well as a rocket which is able to withstand extreme heat, allowing us to travel to hotter planets. With Ostrum you can now craft better fluid pipes with a higher transfer rate. Another new machine you can craft is the Energizer. The Energizer is a machine capable of powering items and storing large amounts of energy. To charge an item, power the Energizer and then right click on it with that item. The block can store up to 2 million energy, making it really useful as a battery, if you don't want to or can't take solar panels or other energy generator blocks with you. The block also retains its energy when broken, allowing you to carry it in item form without losing its energy contents. Furthermore, you can craft an oxygen sensor, which gives out a redstone signal if it detects oxygen. That is pretty useful if you want to, for example, have a control room and check your station's oxygen supply. There's also a new fuel production method, the cryofreezer. This machine can produce a better fuel called cryofuel, which is more efficient than normal fuel, allowing you to launch significantly faster and with just one bucket. You can create it by mining ice shards, which are found as an ore on the moon and Mars. You can create an infinite supply by making a mob farm on the moon as the corrupted Lunarians drop them. Insert these shards into the freezer and it will convert them into the cryo fuel. Alternatively, you can convert ice, packed ice and blue ice into normal fuel. However, the amount you get from that is extremely small compared to ice shards, so I don't recommend it. Cryo fuel also has some additional features like damaging anything inside, like lava when placed down. Furthermore, it freezes water, allowing for an infinite ice source. Moreover, on Mars you can find Martian Raptors, which deal damage with melee attacks. To get to the next planets, you'll need some protection from the extreme heat. You need to craft a rocket capable of surviving the heat, along with a powerful netherite spacesuit that will protect you from these elements. The netherite spacesuit is an upgraded version of the normal spacesuit, featuring fire resistance, more protection and the ability to survive on Venus and Mercury. Before you travel to Mercury or Venus, you need to equip the suit, otherwise you will burn to death. Then you need to craft a tier 3 rocket, which you know the process is just as before, just using Ostrom and Whoosh. You can now land on Venus, a burning planet with nether-like features, acid rain and the most powerful ore in this mod, Calorite, which will enable us to build the ultimate rocket capable of traveling to a new solar system. Calorite is not easy to obtain. Underground you will find a new and dangerous mob, the Sulphur Creeper. These are much faster than their Earth counterparts and you do not want to get caught in their explosion. They will consume part of your oxygen supply if you are damaged making it easy to run out of oxygen if you are not careful. On the Venus surface, you will find many nether-inspired mobs such as Pyrgos and Moglus. These are stronger variants that are built to survive the extreme heat of Venus. Venus also has multiple structures that feature loot such as netherite. Moreover, we can now build the strongest spacesuit, the jet suit, which is an upgraded version of the netherite spacesuit and gives you more protection, additional oxygen storage and the ability to fly. It is quite expensive but offers you to fly at high speeds and is therefore really useful. There are two modes, ascending by pressing space which will make you fly upwards and boosted by pressing space and sprint which is similar to flying with an Eleutera that is constantly being propelled by fireworks. In order for your suit to fly, you need to charge it with energy using the Energizer. You can also visit another planet from the solar system using your tier 3 rocket, Mercury. This planet is currently pretty empty with limited mobs and no structures. However, solar panels produce the most energy here as they are closest to the sun, allowing you to build an energy efficient base. Once we have found enough calorite, we can build a tier 4 rocket and leave our solar system. The first planet we will head to in Proxima Centauri is Glacio. A brutally cold planet with oxygen, allowing you to survive there without a spacesuit. Here you can find a mob called Glacian Ram. This is an animal that can be sheared and milked. They eat permafrost. 
This is the end of the Ad Astra progression. However, the developers have stated that they want to completely refactor everything with a whole new progression and significantly more content for all the planets. So be sure to stay tuned for that. I leave their Discord in the description if you want to stay updated on that. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you don't want to miss any further reviews, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.